got. Got a fish on here. That's a little bit better one. Once again, as soon as I, as soon as I switch to that, to the snap weight, boom, got another one. Fish on. There we go. Oh, this feels better. This feels really good, whatever it is. Good morning, everyone. I'm back here today. I'm going to be fishing some cranks, and I'm going to be fishing them two different styles. Uh, the first style is going to be, I'm just going to long line one on that side with a uh, flicker, flicker minnow, number nine. <clears throat> We're in about 20 about 24 feet of water is what we're in. So I'm gonna run this one about, that one about 100 feet back. And then what I'm gonna do with my other one, which is probably my favorite way to fish cranks, is with a snap-on weight. And with that snap-on weight, I'm able to fish this number four and a half Selmo right at 24 feet without an issue at all. So as soon as I get the boat set here, you guys see where I'm sitting on this one? Oop, a little too much on that one. There we go. So what I'll do is I'll just zero that out. Let about 10 feet, since the water is fairly, the water is fairly uh, dirty. So I am able to run this snap weight. Where did I put it here now? I'm able to run the snap weight fairly close to the crank. So I'll go about 10 feet. I'll put the snap weight on. And then I'll just, and all I'll do is I'll uh, free spool it to the bottom. Just like that, hit bottom. I'm gonna give it one little crank up, maybe two. Keep that crank off the bottom a little bit. Or keep that weight off bottom so that, that weight's not hitting bottom and gets hung up. And that's really all there is to it. And we're trolling the shoreline here. That's, there ain't really nothing special to it. It's just kind of a bigger flat. To go, it's a gradual drop and everything else. So fish are kind of here and there and everywhere in here. So what a better way to fish them is with crankbaits. Fish on here. Let more line out than this fish hit. I'm not sure what it is. It feels pretty big. Just moved out a little bit deeper and I was letting line out. And as soon as I did, the rod just bounced. Wasn't really paying attention at first. And kind of grabbed it by the spool and it just stayed bent over so I'm not sure what we got going on here if we got a northern or actually got a bigger walleye but let's hope for the second one you know that or snagged a carp or something here but a lot of weight and every once in a while a head shake what do I got here Frickin' catfish on a crank. You've got to be kidding me. <sighs> catfish hit this number nine flicker minnow. Unbelievable. Just can't get away from him. Fish on, I believe. Does not feel very big, whatever it is. I 
Yeah, well, it's walleye, I guess. Kind of a pain in the butt to do this yourself, but when you're alone, what do you do? Come here, little guy. It's a little, I suppose, 13, 14 inch, I suppose. Four and a half Selmo with a snap weight. Got that one in 20, 20 feet. Doing right around 1.9 miles an hour. I've been kind of moving around, <clears throat> changing depth, changing speed, and nothing really seems to work here this morning, but I finally got, if I was keeping fish, that would have been a nice one for the fry pan, but not gonna be keeping any today. Get back down there and see if we can get another one to go here. I might have figured something out here. It does not feel very big, but you now it's got a little more weight. Eh, nothing big. Nothing big, but it's a walleye. Come here. Once again in the Selmo four and a half. Just T-boned it. And his gills. Ouch. And my finger. Here's the little guy though. Four and a half with uh snap weight is the only thing I'm getting getting bit on here I might have to swap the other one over quick maybe to another four and a half Selmo with maybe a different color oh, another fish again already huh once again does not feel very big that was quick. I just threw the other one back and I was actually changing my other rod out for for a I was gonna put another Selmo on, but I think I'll end up putting on maybe a flicker shad instead. Number seven or number five even. But man, they just no size. <clears throat> Oop, that one fell right off, but just no size, but getting something finally put together here. In my opinion, these uh, snap weights are just probably the most effective way to fish cranks, uh, to get them down to the depth that you want, get them down there quick, uh, keep them in the water column exactly where you want them. It takes all the guessing game out of everything when it comes to how much line out, how far down, what crank you're running. You know, I'm running um, a four and a half Selmo here and a number seven flicker shad there, and I'm running in 20 feet of water. And I got 45 feet of line out is all. I mean, it's all right there. You know, there is there is a place and time for it, but it just seems like I get bit more with these on. And I don't know if it's just a confidence thing for me, but it seems like I get bit more with snap weights on. You know, the other really two styles to run them is to long line them <clears throat> and lead core. And normally I'll run you know, if it's just me and the boat, I will run, you know, one of each. And then if one's hitting better than the other or one's not taking any hits at all, I'll switch it up. So say if I'm long lining on this rod here and I'm not taking any strikes, normally I would go up and I grab my lead core rod and put lead core out and see how that goes. Now, if they, they won't hit that either, you know, I'll put a snap weight on, on this one here, just like I have this morning now. But... 
it's kind of all I, I believe they they make the you know long lining lead core and snap weights they all make that crank run a little bit different you know in my opinion and I think that's the big difference you know like now that I'm running snap you know snap weights on both you know I think it keeps that crank the nose down of that crank just a little bit and it gives it just a little bit bigger profile maybe for that fish to see or maybe it gives a little bit different vibration for that fish whatever it may be but I do majority of the time take more hits on snap weights than I will um, lead core or, or long line and long line and cranks um, of course there are days where it was just lead core or it was just long line and but overall I, I really believe that the lead core is or excuse me the snap weight is is number one is that's my go-to normally when I pull cranks especially this deep of water I think I might have something on here Yeah, I've got a fish on here while I was talking. Awesome. That's a little bit better one. Once again, as soon as I, as soon as I switch to that, to the snap weight, boom, got another one. And this is nice, probably 14, 15 incher, I suppose. So starting to put a little something together here, finally. It's been a long morning, but, you know, nothing big, but putting something together finally and like I said all I'm doing with these is I'm running them 10 feet back this water is a little dirty not bad if it was um, you know clear water I'd, I'd run it I'd run probably 20 feet back 15 20 feet back and then put that snap weight on like I said being this is a little bit dirtier water I run it 10 feet put that snap weight on free spool it to the bottom once it hits bottom I just give it one little crank and that you know a little crank in the reel and that prevents that <coughs> excuse me that keeps that that weight just enough off bottom where it's not dragging and that's exactly what you want right in here where I'm at it's a little bit snaggy so if you drag that weight you definitely be snagged up right away fish on there we go oh this feels better This feels really good, whatever it is. If it's a walleye or not, if it is, it's a good one. What do we got? Another damn cat. Another catfish on a crankbait. That's the second one today. God, this place is just infested with catfish. Flip him on up in here. Oh, he's really got this one. Just T-bone this this number seven. I can't even get his mouth open to get in there to get the hook out here. Get all three prongs on top of his lips here. There we go. What's also really nice about these, <clears throat> these snap weights for on cranks, when you go to turn, you can turn a little bit sharper. And also when these fish are real finicky, a lot of times what I'll do is when you get kind of a flatter area like this, you know, where I'm at is, you know, I'm, 100 yards offshore and it's only 20 feet deep and I can go out another 300 yards and it only gets to 600 or excuse me 26 feet so what's really nice about these <clears throat> is you can you can make S's when these fish are finicky you know to speed up one side and it'll pick up when you turn the outside will get will speed up then the inside will slow down so that'll fall closer to the bottom and then when you straighten out, they'll level off and vice versa. And a lot of times when you do that, when you're, you know, snaking these things around or making an S shape, you know, that will trigger, that will trigger strikes too. I've had it where days where that's the only thing I could do to get them to go. But it's very effective. I mean, all your lines are close. You don't got them strung all the way out the back. You can turn, 
um, a lot quicker. You can get back, you know, on the line that you're running quicker. Um, and just to me, you know, snap weights. When I started fishing them just a few years ago, you know, I I was kind of unsure of them, but now that I've been fishing them for a few years, I, I tell you, there's there's no better way to fish crankbaits, in my opinion, than with snap weights. You can go out to 50 feet of water and run a number four, four and a half, a five, a seven, and a nine. Any crank you want, you can run at any depth. And we're running at two miles an hour today. You know, I tried two six, two two, two four. Really wasn't really wasn't getting much. I went to um, one eight, one seven. That didn't really help much. So I got right at two miles an hour. And as soon as I had to start hitting two miles an hour, and I changed diff I changed depths quite a bit too. And now it seems, you know, on this hot, calm day like it is, these fish are in 20 feet of water, and they're they're going now. But the problem is a little bit smaller, but that's okay. I uh, I didn't come out here to catch big fish. I just came out here to show, you know, how I pull cranks with with snap weights, and you know, it's always fun getting out. Uh, like I said, I, I ended up, uh, I got down to the tournament last weekend, so that was nine days of being serious every single day fishing, and now I just kind of come out and relax, um, catch a few walleyes. You know, I wish they were a little bit bigger, but we always do, but just kind of enjoying the morning. It's getting hot. I'm not going to be out here too much longer. I got so much to get done at home. I have, <clears throat> tomorrow we got to get ready to go down and, and get our, our, uh, blinds and our deer stand set up for bow season that starts very soon uh, well month in a month that, that starts and then also when I get back from there tomorrow I got to put the downriggers the board and the downriggers on on the boat to get ready for salmon fishing which we're going to start doing that next week matter of fact we're going to take nine days and go up and salmon fish on Lake Sakakawea so stay tuned for those videos I'm hoping to have quite a few of those um, we'll see how it goes. We've been kind of having some tough luck the last couple years with it. Uh, we're kind of figuring it was a boat issue. Um, we kind of think that we had current from the boat going down on the downrigger cables. I don't know. I've asked quite a few people, but it is what it is. So we're going to go and hit that hard next weekend or ne the next week again. And we're going to have a couple friends of ours that's been friends with us for 20 years and they had come out every year and fished with us for about four days, so that'll be a lot of fun. But I'm going to finish this pass out, and as you can see, it's getting hot and, and flat calm. The bugs are getting bad. Um, it's been a fun morning, but I'm going to finish this pass out, and I'm going to I'm going to hit it. There's another fish. Doesn't feel like nothing big again, but. Just another little guy. Just another little, little, little guy. Oofta. That cell almost is bigger than he is. this one is if it's another cat or what but man this thing just drilled this crank hopefully it's a big walleye to end the day here it's kind of some dead weight what we got here haven't seen it yet Yeah, another catfish, my goodness. <laughs> Just a big cat on this crankbait. Another big cat. Or not a big cat, but a cat. <sighs> he fell off. Unreal. 
that's the third cat I've caught in a crankbait today. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Should be ashamed of myself for getting better catfish than walleyes. I got another one here putting stuff away. There's a better walleye. A little bit better one. Yes, sir. Take a pile of these any day. A pile of these for the, for the fry pan. Nice 15, 14, 15 incher here. Not gonna go home with me today, but. Ouch, you old turd. Oh, come here. I got my finger. See in the back of him, something tried to get him. Another fish. There we go. This doesn't feel very big at all. No, oh, just a little guy. Ski him on in. Whew. Look at that magnum. Well, I think that's going to do it for me today. I'm going to start getting stuff uh, put away, loaded up. I got to get the boat home, get it cleaned up. And uh, like I said, get ready for tomorrow, get ready for next week. It's getting hot. Um, get back in the AC here. Got about an hour and 15 minute drive back to the house here. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something on snap weights. I know it wasn't the bigger walleyes you, you know, everybody wants to see, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I always enjoy coming out and catching fish. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.